Hey, it's me, Steve. Um, today, which is September 24, 2017, I was at Illinois Beach State Park visiting the Dead River right on the uh, mouth of the Dead River. The Dead River is the only river in Illinois that still flows into Lake Michigan, and it was right on the beach, and I decided to just start picking up some rocks and uh, from the beach, uh, the beach pebbles, and I'm just going to sit here and tell you kind of what they are uh, and tell you about you know, their origins and place of origins, if you if you know. I mean, a lot of times it's really hard to pin down a rock. I mean, where it originally came from. I mean, like the volcanics of the Mid-Continent Rift are pretty simple. Um, but, you know, I just want to show you this, and uh, I'll give you some, uh, and just kind of give you a feel for how to identify rocks in the field, and there's a GPS coordinate here. So let's get started. All right, I'm going to start showing you the rocks that I looked up at the that I saw along the beach. I'm just going to describe them to you the best that I can from what I can tell from looking at a lot of rocks in the Midwest from the Precambrian all the way up through the Paleozoic. Um, I'm not going to use any transitions like fades or anything like that. I'm just going to go from one to the next. And if a rock, if I have different views of the rock, I'll let you know. Okay, this first one here. This is a yellowish brown carbonite. You can see the pores in it, or carbonite, sorry, wrong word, carbonate. Uh, it's a limestone. Uh, it's got a little brownish hue to it. Uh, it's porous. You can see the pores in it. Um, I have no idea what age this would be or where it's from. Uh, but I just picked it up because it was cool looking. You can see the uh, yellow limonite. Um, the, the yellow in it's a mineral called limonite, which is common in Silurian uh, rocks, so it could be Silurian. This next one, this one is a, it, it, it's a porphyritic rhyolite is the best way I can think of to describe this. Uh, you can see the white in it is big quartz uh, crystals, but the rest of the rock is kind of fine-grained. Um, so I, I, technically it's, it's a rhyolite. And it likely came from the Upper Peninsula, probably the Mid-Continental Rift. There's a lot of rocks like this in the Mid-Continental Rift, especially in the Wisconsin area around uh, Ashland. And uh, this next one here, this one is a micaceous sandstone. It's this light gray rock. It, um, this one's kind of harder to peg down. This likely came from Canada, and it's definitely Precambrian. The sedimentary rocks in the Continental Rift don't have this gray color to them. They tend to be red and, and very red. So this is likely an Archean uh, or Paleoproterozoic uh, sandstone. This here, this is just a white limestone that's been tumbled around in the lake for a while before wash, washed up on the beach. You can tell in it, you can see the little pits in the porosity and near my middle, between my middle and my ring finger, you can see an imprint of a fossil in it. This is likely Silurian and likely from the uh, um, Niagara Escarpment which surrounds the Michigan Basin. Now here I have several rocks that are, they're rhyolite granite type rocks. Uh, they're it's hard to tell because some of them are so small. The one on the very bottom of the photo is likely a rhyolite. The other ones tend to have more crystals in them, but they definitely have a lot of alkali feldspar. You can see the quartz, and you can see the darker uh, minerals in it, which are probably a horn blend. And the two middle ones, and the top one doesn't have any dark middle, uh, minerals in it. But these are likely just fine-grained granites or coarse-grained rhyolites, and they are likely also mid-continental rift rocks. I like this little guy here. I found him. Uh, I got lucky with this. This is a piece of banded iron formation, actually. It's been extremely weathered. Most of the iron has been oxidized as it's turned around through the lake and moved by glaciers, and this is all that's left of it. Um, that's where the red comes from. The gray is just residual hematite that hasn't weathered yet. This little guy, he's tough to figure out. He really was, because you see the dark minerals against the yellowish brown host rock and it took me a while to figure out what this was because I assumed at first glance it was igneous but it's actually a piece of limestone a brownish limestone and these are uh, pyritic inclusions once I looked at it with a hand lens I could tell that's what they were and sorry you have to listen to Ezra crying in the background I don't know why he's doing that 
But anyway, here we have three fine-grained igneous rocks. Uh, some crystals are visible in them. These are best described as diabases, uh, but th th they're they're almost gabbros. Um, I mean, you can almost identify them. It's kind of iffy basalt. Yeah, I mean, so I just I call them diabase. This one's definitely a gabbro. And this is likely also from the Mid-Continental Rift of either the UP or Ontario. You can see the uh, uh, more intact, coarser grains. And this one, you can see the lighter grains, which are uh, plagioclase feldspars in it, which is you can, usually not visible in a gabbro, but here they are. This here is igneous. This is just uh, a, the dark part is hornblende. Uh, decent crystals of it. They're small, but they're there. And the host rock is a plagioclase of some sort. So this likely came from a pegmatitic uh, igneous rock, probably in Ontario somewhere. That it's probably Archean in age. This one here is a uh, another limestone. It's weathered. It's porous. You can see the pores in it. And uh, this one is somewhat crystalline. I mean, you can see that uh, you know the, the 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 actual rock itself is grained. It has a granular nature to it, but it's not like an it's not made of oolites or pack stone or anything. So it, it, it's just a crystalline limestone, and I just thought it was cool. It's likely Silurian. Probably came once again from the Niagara Escarpment. This is another piece of feldspar, or not feldspar, of mica-rich sandstone. Uh, and like the other one I showed you, this one also likely ha is uh, from Ontario. But the thing about this one is you can actually see in the middle that kind of weathered out band of a slightly softer sandstone in between the uh, two uh, slightly more resilient parts, giving it a kind of hamburger look, if you will. This... Uh, when I took petrology, they love to try to trick us with this stuff. Can you guess what it is? It's a brick. <laughs> it's a piece of brick. Um, it's just a standard red brick. You find this a lot along the beaches and stuff. You'll find things like tumbled glass pieces that are rounded or, su or subangular, and they're really shiny and stuff. And you just got to be careful what you're looking at. Uh, this here is just the flip side of the brick. This little piece here, the only reason why I included it here is because I couldn't find any big pieces of it. On other beaches, there's bigger pieces of it. But this is just brown shirt, chert, uh, very common in Silurian rocks, uh, which I'm sure is where it came from. So, yeah, I just, that was <laughs> kind of weird right there. It was the biggest pebble I could find of it. This little guy here, this is amygdal basalt from the UP. Uh, you can see the white quartz veins cross-cutting it, kind of leading into two greenish... Uh, Phenocris, those that green is epidote. Uh, these are very common on the Keweenaw Peninsula, these type of basalts. Uh, so that's probably where this one originated from. This right here is a piece of andesite, purple andesite. Um, this probably could have come from Wisconsin or the Upper Peninsula. Uh, these type of andesites are really, really common. Um, near the base of the Mid-Continental Rift Volcanics. This here, I like this. Um, this is a piece of, uh, it's, I would call it a granite, uh, or a cyanetic granite. You can see the white quartz in it, and the red is all cyanite, but the cyanite's microcrystal, and the quartz is kind of bigger. You can see the crystals better. But what I love about this is the fact that it has this yellowish band through it. And what this probably is, is yellowish band's probably a fracture heel. Uh, this rock probably fractured at some point and f got filled in with the sediments either from above or, s or something like that, and it just filled it. It's probably a mid-continental rift rock as well. I just thought that one is neat because it's cut like that. I like this one. I just thought this one was a cool granite because you can see everything. You can see the pink alkali feldspar in this. That's what the, that's what the red is. Uh, you can see the lighter, I don't want to say, the almost white stuff. That's actually plagioclase. Um, and the 
light or not light gray, but medium gray stuff, if you will, that's quartz. And the dark gray, almost black parts, that's hornblende. So this is a very typical coarse grain granite rock. And this honestly could have come from anywhere from uh, southern Wisconsin all the way up to Hudson Bay. Uh, it's, it's really hard to tell with that one. But it's probably also uh, um, Archean or, or uh, Paleoproterozoic in age. This here is the only piece of red sandstone I found on the beach. It's uh, it's like it's 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 arcosic. It's it's fine to medium grain, which is kind of weird for an arcos, but that's common in the Jacobsville group uh, of sandstones. And there are some larger class in it, like near the shadow of my thumb on it. You can see a lighter colored white piece uh, that's a lithic inclusion. So I mean, it, it does have some coarse grains in it, but this is an arcosic sandstone. It's just an arcos, as we call it, or ar or arcosic aronite. Uh, there's almost no silt in it, though, even though it's kind of a finer grain sandstone. This one here is a nice. Um, it's kind of cool because you can see the uh, orientation of the dark bands against the white bands. Uh, the darker bands are micas. The lighter bands are a mix of plagioclase and quartz. Uh, you can't really tell in the picture, but there, there's both. This is the parent rock of this is probably a granite. And on the right side, you see this lighter, kind of yellowish colored, pinkish colored uh, rock. It's actually pinkish colored in here. It looks a little yellow. That's just an inclusion of an of a alkali feldspar mineral within it. But you can see the lineation and foliation that make it a nice... This is just a piece of limestone, uh, probably from the Niagara Escarpment, probably Silurian in age or Devonian, something like that. Um, but the cool thing about this is, I mean, it could even be Cambrian or Ordovician, too. Uh, if you go northwest, you get in the Cambrian and Ordovician carbonates. If you just go strictly go straight north or north-northeast, they tend to be Silurian and Devonian. Uh, but this one, I just like this one because the... Uh, Light brown color is the limestone, the micritic limestone or microcrystalline limestone. You can see the white uh, pot marks in it, which are actually uh, fossil relics of uh, stuff that's uh, washed out of it. And pore fills, too, of subsequent uh, calcite as, they, as whatever little creatures were in there had weathered out. This is a white piece of limestone, once again likely from the Niagara Escarpment and likely Silurian. The Silurian limestones tend, I don't really, uh, they, they tend to be light gray or white in color from this point north. I mean, at this beach, everything sitting on it has derived either from due north being carried by the glaciers or has arrived from the currents of Lake Michigan. Uh, so it, it's, that's how these rocks have gotten here. This is another one of those uh, ones they love to trick us on petrology tests with. I don't know if you can identify it or what you think it is, but this is also really common on the beaches in Illinois. Um, it's a piece of asphalt, and it's just weathered really cool because the petroleum, dark petroleum products, which make up the, the uh, ground mass for the asphalt, have kind of weathered out, and the more resilient aggregate of the asphalt is still intact, the, the lighter and yellowish uh, colored rocks in it. So that's a piece of asphalt. I like this. This is cool. This is a color banded limestone. Um, it just varies. Some parts are gray, some parts are that yellowish brown, and it's it shows some sedimentary features, uh, you know, laminations, thick laminations to it. Um, likely also from the Niagara Escarpment, likely Silurian in age, and you can tell it's kind of porous a little bit. There's some holes in it, but I just like that one because I thought it looked cool. This here, I like this one. This is a red rhyolite, porphyritic rhyolite. Uh, you see the darker red between my index and thumb, index finger and thumb. And you can tell there's light yellow phenocris in it, which I couldn't really identify. This one's kind of rounded a lot. I couldn't identify it with the hand lens uh, very well. So, I mean, I, I think it might be uh, phenocris of some plagioclase mineral, but I'm not sure. Um, and there is quartz in this. It's very, it's a lot finer grain than the phenocrysts are. And right next to it, that gray extending out from my thumb, that looks like it was a later intrusion. 
Uh, it, it's definitely a fine-grained diabase of some sort, likely a basalt. You can see that there's inclusions in it. There's a little bit of red and yellow in it, too. So that was likely a, intruded into the rhyolite. Or, uh, yeah, that, that, that's probably the way it went. Because remember, rhyolites are extrusive forms of granite. So that the lava would have flowed on top of the surface, and the finer-grained uh, dike likely intruded it later. But it could be reversed. Um, you never know. It's hard to tell. <laughs> it's just a rock on a beach, but uh, that's probably also a big continental rift rock. I love this one. This one's really cool. This one, the dark minerals in it, I couldn't tell what they were. Uh, you see some larger chunks. Uh, the really black ones almost look like hornblende, but this rock is really weathered. It could be an amphibolite. Uh, the uh, lighter colors in this rock, the yellow and the kind of slightly pinkish, yellowish hues, those are plagioclase minerals. Those I could tell what they are. So this is likely a, at best, a diorite uh, or a Nysic diorite. It was just really hard to tell, but I just thought that one was really cool. And this is the last one. This one's similar to the other uh, light brown porphyritic limestone I showed you where you could see the like fossils weathered out and then replaced with uh, calcite and, and other minerals in it. But here they're still intact. You can still see some little little uh, crescents of uh, fossils and stuff, fossil debris. And this is also likely uh, from Niagara Escarpment as well. But uh, that is all the pictures, and I hope you learned something.